Touchscreen devices are almost everywhere nowadays, from cell phones to monitors, even reaching as far as replacing your waiter with self-ordering kiosks, making these guys kinda obsolete. But have you ever wondered how touchscreens work? What's up guys, Josh here of Get Tech, and this is Touchscreens Quickly Explained. Touchscreens have been around for quite some time now, and depending on your age, you might even still remember one of these bad boys. But what really revolutionized the touchscreen industry was the release of Apple's original iPhone, which was the first hugely successful mass-market mobile to be operated completely by a touchscreen without a stylus. Nonetheless, there are many different types of touchscreen panels that each work in a different way. But for the sake of this video, we're going to just mention the three main kinds of touchscreens. Resistive, capacitive, and infrared. Resistive touchscreens operate by sensing direct pressure applied by the user. They consist of two layers, positive and negative, and are separated by a gap in the middle. So when an object such as a fingertip or stylus presses down on the outer surface, the positive and negative touch, thus completing a circuit. Although it has a couple of disadvantages such as a low touch sensitivity and its inability to recognize multi-touch, resistive touchscreens are still praised for their handwriting recognition, which is why they're still being used today for digital signatures and drawing tablets. Other devices that you might be familiar with that use these panels are ATMs, the Nintendo DS, and of course for those of you who still remember, the legendary Palm Pilot for all you OGs over there. You might be more familiar with capacitive touchscreens, which is probably the most common type of touchscreen there is today. Unlike resistive touchscreens, capacitive panels use the conductive touch of a human finger for input. This type of touchscreen consists of an insulator such as glass coated with a transparent conductor. When when a capacitive panel is touched, a small amount of charge is drawn between the point of contact, causing a distortion in the screen's electromagnetic field measurable as a change in capacitance. It sounds complicated, but you're basically just disrupting a connection which gets converted as an input. Capacitive touchscreens have been found to be more advantageous for mobile phones than their resistive panel counterparts, offering a higher touch sensibility, sharper images with better contrast, and probably one of the most important features of them all, multi-touch capabilities. The only drawback with these screens is that you can't use normal gloves since it requires some form of conduction. This type of touchscreen is currently the standard for smartphones and tablets. As a matter of fact, you're probably using one now. There's another type of touchscreen though that you might be unfamiliar with. If resistive touchscreens rely on pressure and capacitive touchscreens with conduction, infrared touchscreens rely on a grid-like array of LED lights and sensors around the edges of the device that constantly project light. When you touch the surface, it creates a disturbance in this light which allows it to identify the precise point of contact. It's pretty good at registering multiple fingerprints as well. This is probably the least common from the three, but good examples of these are the first generation ebooks such as the Amazon Kindle Touch or those infrared touch sensor frames that you can hook up to your regular monitor to turn into a touchscreen. This tech isn't you either, and although it sounds pretty cool, it isn't nearly as responsive as a capacitive touchscreen, which we think will be sticking around for a while. We've come a long way with how we interact with our devices. What else do you think touchscreens can offer? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and be sure to visit yougatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This is Josh, and I'll catch you on the next one.